Okay, I think we can all agree that AI has made our life way easier in the past year and has been a useful tool to help us be more efficient and productive in our day to day. So today I wanna to talk about four AI tools that I think all photographers should be using right now. These are tools that have helped me save time in the planning process, in the culling process, and in the editing process. And we're also gonna talk about a tool that can help us protect our photos. And before we get started, I just wanted to thank after shoot for sponsoring today's video. I'll talk a little bit more about them later on. Okay, let's get right into it with our first AI tool being ChatGPT. If you don't know what ChatGPT is, essentially it's a free AI tool that you can access through their website. You can even download their iPhone app or their smartphone app. They just came out with that recently. And basically it's a tool that you can ask it whatever you want, whatever you have in your mind or whatever you want it to do, you can ask it. I use it to plan photo shoots and get inspired. I also use it to write email pitches and email templates. Write a photography pitch email to a motorcycle brand that will have models. If you actually read through it, it does sound really good. Like by featuring skilled riders alongside your motorcycles, we can create a captivating series of images that highlight the adrenaline, elegance, and rugged beauty that your brand is known for. You can use it for anything. I use it for photography ideas. So if I ask it, I'm planning a portrait session with an 80s vibe, what props should my model bring? You know, there's things like Rubik's cubes, boombox, cassette tapes. I even ask it for outfit ideas. Now it already knows 80s vibe because I talked about it earlier. It'll put together outfit ideas. The glam rocker, a fitted top with a plunging neckline, fishnet stocking, like this is so powerful. Like I said, this tool is free, so I'll leave the link down below. And all you have to do is sign up and you can start using it. Now, if you've been on social media lately, you've probably seen a ton of videos on Photoshop's new feature called Generative Fill. Currently, I believe this is only available in the beta version of Photoshop, which if you already pay for Photoshop, all you have to do is go into your Creative Cloud app, click on apps, find Photoshop beta and download it. My hand's already starting to hurt. I should have grabbed a little a table to put this on. This is probably one of the coolest tools that Photoshop or Adobe have ever made. But in terms of what Generative Fill can do, just like ChatGPT, you can tell it to do anything you want. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this is a photo I had taken for a local food truck for their new chicken sandwich. And it looks great. This looks awesome, but this is not how the photo actually looked. I'll show you how the photo actually looked. This is how the photo looked. I start a new layer. I'll select here and I'll just do generative fill, write whatever I want. So I'll write commercial kitchen background and we'll see what it generates. It'll give you three results for anything it generates. So look, this is our first one. This is our second one. And then this is our third option. So sometimes, you know, it's not perfect, but we just click generate again. Okay. So now this one looks a little bit better. I actually really like this one. This is our second one and this is our third one, which you know, I actually really like this one. I probably like this one better than the original. So this is a photo I took of Corinna here. So like I said, you can remove things really, really easy with generative fill. Let's say this little plant here, let me just select it, click generative fill and I'll just type remove. There we go, gone just like that. If I wanted to add a prop because you know, the background was very plain and I can say add a painting. And scroll through this one doesn't look too bad it's crazy generative fill is so good i use it almost every single day and i think all photographers should be using it right now now i've mentioned in previous videos how manually culling through a gallery after a session has always been that one thing that i just never looked forward to it has always been that one task that has drained all my energy and has made the photo shoot process not fun. A session that I could have finished editing and already delivered in two hours would sometimes take me five to six hours, sometimes even days because I would spend so long on the editing process or the culling process. I've called sessions of over 700 photos all the way down to 40 of the best photos using Aftershoot, which is crazy. 700 photos down to 40 of the best ones 
that I can actually send to the client. So let me show you real quick what Aftershoot is capable of doing and how powerful it is. And I should mention that it's not just a culling software. It was when I first discovered it. Now they've introduced something called Aftershoot Edits, which will basically use AI to learn your editing style and you can edit full on 3000 photo galleries using Aftershoot's edits and you're not even touching the photos. You're not even editing them. We'll click on new album. We'll click on start culling. I'm gonna click on add folder and I'm just gonna choose this folder of Harshita here from a recent shoot I did with her. So you can see it's importing. It imports everything extremely fast and you can see we have 663 images. I'm gonna click on start culling and basically I'm gonna tell it what type of shoot it is. I'm gonna say portraits and headshots. And you can do a customized AI call or you can do an automated AI call. The automated, you just tell it, do you want more photos? Do you want standard or a few? I'll do customized AI call. We're gonna leave the blurry photos detection on. We're gonna click on customize and there's actually a setting here. You can have it lenient, moderate, and strict. And it really all depends on how many photos do you really want to be left with? If you want to be left with the least amount of photos as possible, I would go as strict as possible. And we also want to turn on closed eye detection. So if there's any photos with her closed eyes, AI will automatically detect that and not select it. So we'll click on start culling. So you can see it's just finishing up right now. You can see that it called all 663 photos in five minutes and 28 seconds, which is extremely fast, saves me hours of time doing it by myself. And you can see for our selected photos, these are the photos that the AI thinks are the best photos. You can see we have eight closed eye photos here. We have three blurred photos. Now you can see that it's still a lot of photos, like 336 photos. If you're someone who's trying to deliver a gallery of 40 photos, 336 is still, you know, up there. So there's other things you can do to get it down even lower. Something I like to do is this spray can mode. And so essentially you would click on your left key click here. The left key is going to bring all the photos into my selections and we'll leave the right key not doing nothing. The nice thing is that you can use this spray can mode when you're not zoomed all the way into the photo because you don't need to be zoomed all the way into the photo. If the AI already removed all the closed eye photos and all the blurred photos, you can do this really, really quick. I like this photo. There we go. So now we're done. We'll go into my selections and you can see that out of all those photos, 37 photos. Now here's a cool part. If you don't want to slow down your Lightroom catalog and have to go through all of those 600 photos, you can just export the 37 photos. We'll click on export 37, one click export to Lightroom classic, because that's what I'm using. And I already had a new Lightroom catalog opened up and you can see that just the 37 photos are selected. We'll click on import. And you can see that it only imported those 37 photos. So now I can just go through and edit those photos. I don't have to go through all of those other photos. These are my 37 selects. These are what I'm going to deliver to the client. And those are the ones I can edit. I love Aftershoot so much that I actually reached out to them a few weeks ago to see if they wanted to sponsor a video. And I thought this would be the perfect video to fit them in or slot them into. And they actually gave me a 10% discount for you guys if you guys want to try Aftershoot for yourself. So thank you Aftershoot for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys are interested in checking it out, I'll leave that discount link in the description down below. Okay, now let's talk about protecting your photos. Last year, I had a big brand take one of my photos or screenshot one of my photos and use it to sell and promote one of their products. The funny thing is the leather jacket that my model was wearing wasn't even made by the brand that took the photo. The not so funny thing is all the issues that can actually arise from 
this happening from someone stealing some of your photos. Issues between me, my business, and the model and her agency because she didn't sign a model release because it wasn't a commercial shoot. So this can lead to lawsuits directed towards me from my subject, from my model, and from her agency. So how can you catch them? How do you know if your photos are being stolen and used online to promote other people's products? How do you know if your photos are being used somewhere else online? And more importantly, how do you actually take action. I discovered a software called Pixie last year and I've been recommending it to everyone. It is a free program. You can upgrade if you want to. However, I'm still running on the free plan and that's probably what I would recommend you do. You could import pictures off of your computer. You can also import off of Instagram, Flickr. So once you connect your Instagram or you import your photos, it'll refresh this page with new matches. I can guarantee you have matches. I can guarantee people are using your photos somewhere out there. So it says I have 31 and basically we can scroll and you can see that this is my photo. This is the title of the website. And then right here is the page URL. So you can click on this and it'll actually bring you to the page that's using that photo of yours. So right there, you can see my photo. If I wanted to take legal action, I can click on take action and I can either submit a takedown or you can skip the takedown process and go straight to submit a case. And what submit a case does, you can see it right here, presents a case to Pixie's management team and their legal team. And they try to recover compensation from the business who is operating that website. And yes, you can still do all of this stuff even on a free plan. Regardless of the plan, Pixie takes a percentage, but only takes a percentage of what they get. So if they don't get anything, they don't take nothing. They don't come after you and be like, hey, we wasted our resources. We're coming to you for a thousand dollars. I do have friends that have used Pixie and they have submitted a lot of claims through it and have made like a lot of money, like a ridiculous amount of money just from, you know, getting compensation for their copyrighted work. Like I'm talking thousands and thousands of dollars. With that being said, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed, if you found it helpful, if you learned about some new AI tools that you should start using today, make sure you click that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks again, Aftershoot for sponsoring today's video. I appreciate it a lot and I'll see you in the next one.